It's a world first, a living cell driven by synthetic DNA code put together by a computer. This new cell, nicknamed Cynthia, is a milestone for science. And if you believe the razzmatazz, the dawn of a new era. It's the work of Dr. Craig Venter, the controversial scientist famous for developing the super fast technique that helped crack the human genome 10 years ago. We're here today to announce uh, the first uh, synthetic cell. So uh, this is the first self-replicating species that we've had on the planet whose parent is a computer. Uh, it also is the first uh, species to have its own website encoded in its genetic code. Dr. Venter and his team had already pieced together tiny snippets of DNA that in a string represent a synthetic version of the genome of a microbe that is found in the wild. They'd successfully inserted that DNA on the back of an artificial chromosome into a second naturally occurring microbe with its own DNA stripped out. Now they've booted up the combination and shown that it behaves just as the inserted DNA code tells it to, including that fundamental of life, making copies of itself. The aim eventually is to add other functional pieces of DNA, telling a synthetic organism to carry out specific tasks to order, such as cleaning up an oil slick or nuclear waste. But the big bucks are likely to be in new fuels. BP and Exxon fund Dr. Venter's work. There are billions of dollars going into this around the world. This is a vibrant science in the UK too, and here at the Royal Society, a focal point of British science for centuries, they're talking about how best to liaise with scientists overseas, not just in the US, but also in China, where their Race for Life programme is already underway. But should scientists do something just because they can? It's important for scientists to ask big questions. We have a new way now to think about where life came from because evolution is a very slow process and this speeds it up. So we can now study evolution in a way we couldn't before. And that, it seems to me, is a question that was well worth asking and well worth trying to answer. This area of science is so new and considered to be so important, there's not one but two meetings on the subject in London today. The first back there at the Royal Society and a second looking at marrying these artificial life forms with emerging engineering technologies. The idea being to create applications in areas as diverse as biological machines and synthetic body parts. Where it's going is to produce, in my view, a new industrial revolution. So we now have the technological tools to really do things, coupled to the fact that we're now in synthetic biology bringing together biology and engineering. And once you bring engineering into this, then what you're talking about is an industrial output. Critics argue that we have not yet learned how to weigh up the risks of letting loose such novel organisms. Others are suspicious of what they see as science playing God. I don't think Craig Venter's playing God. I think he's being very human. He's trying to get more money invested in his new technology and he's trying to avoid regulation of the downsides. Uh, this is based on very speculative benefits, but there are real concerns about how uh, new microorganisms might reproduce in the environment and potentially do harm. So we'd like to see a moratorium while, while both those issues are debated. But even those who see money to be made or real potential for good in this work would agree. Society will have to get up to speed fast if it hopes to question what science is now offering. Susan Watts, well, Craig Venter joins us now from Washington. Um, Craig Venter, first of all, are you playing God? Well, that's a term that comes up every time there's a new medical mm -hmm. or scientific breakthrough associated with biology. It's been a goal of humanity from the earliest stages to try and control nature. That's how we got agriculture. That's how we got domesticated animals. Uh, this is the next stage in our understanding, uh, and it's a baby step in our understanding of how life fundamentally works, and maybe how we can get uh, some new handles on trying to control these uh, microbial systems to benefit humanity. So you don't, when you heard there the critique 
that there were concerns about the development of these microorganisms, that there should be a moratorium. Uh, would you go along with the idea of a moratorium until there's a further understanding? Well, we were the first ones to raise uh, ethical questions. We'd asked for an ethical review before we did the first experiment. Uh, those reviews were published in the journal Science in 1999. There's been constant and continuous review and discussion of this work. Uh, in the U.S., uh, we have new committees out of the National Institutes of Health that look at this type of research, the, our National Academy mm -hmm. of Sciences, that three of the authors are a member reviewed this work. So uh, there's been ongoing discussion now for almost 15 years. I think it's important for the ethical and society implication discussion to continue in parallel uh, as this work goes forward. But this is uh, a but commercial. There's hundreds of labs around the world uh, that are uh, doing this work, uh, uh, all designed to try and get us weaned but off the, of oil. But this is a commercial proposition as well, Craig Venter. Let's not make any mistake about this. Uh, is there anyone you wouldn't sell it to? Is this, uh, would this uh, be for sale to the highest bidder? Well, this work was done in a not for profit research institute, starting with the Department of Energy funding. Uh, it was funded uh, by our biotech company, mm -hmm. uh, Synthetic Genomics. Uh, the technology is not for sale. The cells are not for sale. We're trying to use this technology uh, to advance vaccine production. We're trying to use it to advance just the basic understanding of cellular life. But is it fair uh, to say that in the wrong hands, do. Craig Venter, is it, I'm sorry, it's just we have so little time. Is it fair to say that in the wrong hands, there is a real danger of bioterrorism here? No, that was reviewed uh, recently in the U.S. extensively with uh, a report that came out of MIT, uh, a Washington Defense Tank, and uh, my institute participated in that, uh, indicating that there was very uh, small new dangers uh, from this. Uh, most people are in agreement there, there is a slight increase in the potential for harm but there's an exponential increase in the potential benefit to society. So very quickly, what's next for Cynthia? Well, Cynthia is a derogatory term developed by four Canadians, but what's next for synthetic life, uh, the first thing people probably see is potentially the flu vaccine you get next year could be developed by right. these processes. Thank you very much, Craig Venter. David Cameron had begun.